This talk, I'm gonna go over the three steps to success. So let's cut straight to the chase of what the three steps to success are. Now, these are my steps. I can't even say I'm successful, but that's, I'm successful to some and I still think there's others I'm chasing, right? So three steps to success, write this stuff down. Get out a pen and paper, pause the video, write this stuff down. Step one, to achieve success and be successful at anything in life, identify your goal. Step two, write down the success oriented actions it takes to achieve that goal. So what you do is, I'll explain what success oriented actions are, but write those down. Step three to achieve success is what I call cross the bridge of execution. You've gotta execute, you've gotta do them. And we'll get back to all those later. Those are the three steps to success. Now, I'm gonna show you some real life studies or we're gonna go over some real life studies of, of goal setting and things like that. We're gonna go over what reverse engineering is. Write that term down right now when you're watching me. Write down the term reverse engineering. And by the way, if any of my employees are watching, you better be writing this down, okay? I'm gonna go over what reverse engineering is. We're gonna go back through the three steps that I just gave, and I'm gonna go much more detailed. What do I mean by success-oriented actions? What do I mean by cross the bridge of execution? We're gonna go through those in great detail, okay? We're then gonna go over what friction is. Friction is very important to achieving success. And then we're gonna wrap it all up and finish with tying it all back together. So that's what we're doing today on this video here. So. Let's begin with some case studies, okay? So there was this awesome study done in 1979 at Harvard University where they went to their students that were studying on their MBAs and they did a survey of their students. Now this is 1979. The best part of it though, it's 2022 when I'm doing this video and everything they said back then applies today too. So there's no difference. So you're talking what, like 43 years? Ultimately, they went to the students and they said, how many of you, have goals. Well, 83, 83% of the students did not actually have specific goals. So 83% of the people studying for their MDA, MBA that was at Harvard at that time did not have specific goals upon graduating. Think about it. It's what are you doing when you graduate? Where are you going to work at? What are you going to do? Whatever. 83% did not have a goal. 13% had a goal had a specific goal, but it was not written down. This is the key. It was not written down. The remaining 3% had specific goals and those goals were written down in writing, okay? 83% had no goal, 84% had no goals. 13%, you're at 97, had specific goals, not written down. 3% had them written down. They came back to this group in 1989. 10 years later, they revisited the group. What did they find? They found that the 13% group that had specific goals written down made double the income. Listen to that number. Double the income than the 83%, 84% that did not have it written down. The 3% that had a specific goal and it was written down, averaged making more than 10 times the income of the 97%, the 84 that had no goal and the 13% that had a goal, but it wasn't written down. The 3% who had a goal and it was written down made more than 10 times the amount of money, salary, hourly, whatever it all was than the 97%. That's the importance of number one, goal setting, and number two, writing down your goal. Let me give you another goal that's probably one of the biggest goals that was ever set um, in the history at least of our country. May of 1961, President John F. Kennedy stands in front of Congress and says, we choose to go to the moon. Now you have to understand the time back then, 1961. So ultimately the Russians uh, beat us into outer space Yuri Gagarin had uh, orbited the earth and he had, they, they beat us to outer space. So it was the Cold War, right? President Kennedy, and that's embarrassing for the United States. President Kennedy goes in front of Congress. Now, later that year at Rice University in front of 35,000, he reiterated it. And the it was, it was much more dramatic speech, in my opinion, if you go fast forward to, the, to August of 61. But ultimately, 
President Kennedy set a goal in 1961 that before the end of the decade, this country will put a man on the moon. So that's another example. Now, let's see how we apply that specific example to everything I'm telling you today. Let's get into what reverse engineering is, okay? So you have to understand the concept of reverse engineering. This is what reverse engineering is using President Kennedy's lofty goal to put a man on the moon. Reverse engineering, President Kennedy said, by the end of the decade, we will put a man on the moon, but we choose to go to the moon. That's the goal. So with reverse engineering, you start at the end and then work backwards. President Kennedy's goal was to put a man on the moon. So you write that down first. Step one of my three steps to success are to identify your goal. President Kennedy identified the goal. He wrote it down. It's in the books of history, right? Okay, so that's step one. Identify your goal and write it down. Step two, identify your success-oriented actions to achieve that goal. What did the United States have to do in order to put a man on the moon? They had to research the fuel it takes to get a rocket off the ground, the oxygen, the air for the astronauts in the capsule. How do you land on the moon? How do you take off from the moon? How do you re-enter the Earth's atmosphere with multiple people in that pod to come back, that capsule, you know, to come back to the United States? Those are the success-oriented actions that I talk about to come back. And then step three, cross the bridge of execution. At the end of the day, in 1969, the United States put a man on the moon, of course. Uh, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So ultimately, that's what President Kennedy did. Let's go into the steps specifically um, without even using that example. So step one of the three steps to achieving success identify your goal. You want to write that down. Pretty straightforward. Step two is the big one. Step two is what I call success-oriented actions. These are what success-oriented actions are. Now, I'm going to spin away from President Kennedy with putting a man on the moon. I'm going to spin to myself. I'm going to talk about my cholesterol, right? I've told stories for years. I've got different videos on this um, that ultimately my cholesterol was high. I found out in October of 2017 from the advice of a very, very close friend Pat, if you're watching this video, thank you very much for that, by the way. Um, I got my cholesterol checked in Holy Toledo. It was like sky high, okay? My cholesterol's through the roof. So I came up with a goal to lower my cholesterol. What were the success-oriented actions I had to take in order to lower my cholesterol? Well, for example, I cut out red meat. I stopped eating potato chips. I stopped eating foods in high cholesterol. Now think about my terminology here, success-oriented actions. So the actions are oriented towards success. If you go in reverse, I've had some people say, hey, those are SOAs, that's what we're gonna call them, success-oriented actions. Well, let's go in reverse. Actions oriented towards success. Here's an action that's oriented towards success. Don't eat red meat. Now, so I know people watching are going to say, Hush, but, but, but it runs in my family. I get it. It doesn't run in my family, so it was more my diet that I had to take care of. But let's go through actions oriented towards success. No red meat, no potato chips. Watch things you eat with cholesterol. Eat foods that are, fre that are not cholesterol friendly, you know, things like that. Those are success oriented actions. If you want to contact more people, I'll give you a success, you're in sales, I'll give you a success-oriented action. Dial on the phone. Dial, dial 100 dials today. Call 100 people today. You didn't talk to enough people, call 200 people today. These are success-oriented actions. After you identify your goal, you should be able to identify what are the actions you have to undertake in order to achieve that goal. Step three, of course, is crossing the bridge of execution. I like saying cross the bridge of execution. You got to execute. At the end of the day, you've got what the actions are. I knew to lower my cholesterol, I had to make some difficult decisions. Now, if the worst decision of my life or the hardest is to cut out red meat, for goodness sake, I lived a pretty good life and so far I'm doing pretty good, okay? Um, so it's cross the bridge of execution. You want to execute those tasks. You got to deliver it, okay? This is what you have to do. Now, after you write all of those down and you got the whole plan laid out, 
Let's talk about friction, okay? There's an incredible book. It's called Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits, it's, it's in my book Hall of Fame. If you're watching me and you want my Hall of Fame book, send me a text message to my cell phone, 216-780-1103 and say, Hesh, text me the picture, excuse me, of your Hall of Fame of books, okay? One of those books is called Atomic Habits, okay? Atomic Habits talks about friction. I'll give you an example of friction. Friction could be good, friction could be bad. If you want to form habits, you want to decrease the amount of friction between you and ultimately whatever it is you want to do. If you want to break a habit, you want to increase the amount of friction. I'll give you an example. So this just happened to me, like this actually just happened to me last week, okay? There's this medley of peanuts and things like that at the drug mart right by my house. So when I go to drug mart, I go to buy my avocados, my egg whites and certain things like that, whatever. Um, and my, my bags of ice for my ice bath, whatever. And there's this, ba- I, I was walking down the aisle, which by the way is the second aisle in the, in the store. It's called a, a medley of peanuts, okay? So I, buy, I was like, I don't know, it's peanuts. Peanuts aren't horrible, right? So I buy the bag. Here's the problem that happened. I take the bag home. I buy a few bags. I would realize that inside of three hours, I would end up stuffing that whole bag into my face, but didn't feel like it. One handful here, one handful there, a little pinch there. I'm in the kitchen here. I wake up late. I grab it. But it's peanuts, man. It's not unhealthy. Now, mind you, it wasn't just peanuts. though. So it's peanuts, uh, dried raisins, dried this, dried that, which are loaded with sugar. The next thing I know, I crushed out this gigantic bag of the fruit medley or whatever, the peanut medley, and that bag was 2,000 calories. I was crushing a bag in three hours or four hours or five hours. I came to realize that I've got this great diet that I eat at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and dinner at 7 p.m., and all of a sudden, I don't even realize it, but I'm smashing out this bag of freaking peanuts. It's 2,000 calories at 9.30 at night. So how did I create friction? I wanted to break that habit of eating that stuff. Simple. I stopped buying it. So suddenly, if I don't buy it and it's not in my house, I cannot eat it. So I created friction to ultimately break that habit. To achieve a goal, the goal is to stop eating that stuff. The success-oriented action is to stop buying it. I stopped buying it, and then it made it easy to get rid of it. So you want to understand friction. If you're trying to form a habit, decrease the friction. If you're trying to break a habit, increase the friction. Friction is something that you really got to think about. You got to look at the actions that could help you and the actions that could hurt you, depending on which direction you want to go. Ultimately, what I just gave you, this is the formula to achieve success. It could be applied to wrestling, baseball, opening a business, dieting, losing weight. It can help you with relationships. You've got to write it all down. I circle all the way back to the Harvard study from 1979 with going to the students, 84%, no goals at all. For uh, 13% goals written down, their income is double just by writing their, down their goals. Their income 10 years later was double the first group. The last group, 3%, 3% had the goals written, had knew the goals or had goals and written wrote them down. And those 3% made more than 10 times the 97%. That's the importance of writing down. So the three steps to success, identify your goal, write it down. Identify your success-oriented actions to achieve your goal. Write those down. Last step is the easiest. You got all the stuff written down. Crush it out. Cross, cross the bridge of execution. Those are the three steps to success.